Hello, everybody. Welcome to Gospel Music Buzz. We are delighted and privileged to have with us the one, the only, the Grammy-nominated Dove and Stella Award winner, the one that gave us nobody great. Okay, now. <laughs> <laughs> the one and only Vashawn Mitchell in the house. Oh, yes. Yeah. How y'all doing? Good, good. Joining us tonight. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us. You know, so we were talking a little bit, you know, before we got uh, before we got kicked off. So we wanted to make sure, you know, we're we're gonna make sure we don't take up too much of the time because you know I'm sure you throw it down in the kitchen and you have all these different, you know, meal prep situation going on for tomorrow. So you know, I'll make sure you're still on schedule. Good, good. Well, I don't cook too much, but I got to cook my my certain dishes. So you know. Ah, okay, okay. And, and I'm about to ask about that. Funny enough, you say that. So I was gonna say, if you do throw it down in the kitchen, and even if you don't during these times, you know, what does the family look forward to? Like, what's your go-to dish? Well, my favorite dish to cook, I guess, is seafood macaroni and cheese. Mm. So that's like that's like my contribution to the family meal. You know, I'm not not the best chef, but my grandmother taught me a few things. So. I won't be out here hungry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nice, nice. So your grandma taught you that. So that being said, too, in terms of Thanksgiving, what are some Thanksgiving traditions in your house or what you actually grew up with as far as Thanksgiving? You know what? Just family coming together. You know, we have a pretty large family. My grandparents had like seven kids and then all those kids had kids and kids had kids. And so we have a pretty large family with several dining tables and people sitting in the basement, the kids on the floor. Just, just this whole family atmosphere. This year is going to be a little different because, of, you know, mm -hmm. because of COVID and all that. But um, we look forward to, after this is over, getting back to that family atmosphere. Because we may not see each other all year long sometimes. When mm -hmm. Thanksgiving comes, we give thanks for family and we pray around the table and just celebrate each other, you know, at least once a year. Nice, nice. See, that's that's awesome. And that's how I think it should be, right? Same thing with us, too, this year. You know, everyone is going to just be doing Thanksgiving, you know, within their own homes separately. But, you know, my wife's family has a pretty big family. So, you know, once everyone gets together, like, you know, each siblings have their own three, four kids. So it's like, with, like exactly like you said, everyone comes oh, yeah. together. It's, it's, it's pretty big. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So let me, let me ask you this now. Are you a sneaker person or a shoe person? Yeah, kind of both, but more sneakers than shoes. Um, okay. Uh, I have a lot of sneakers, but some of those are designer, but some of them, like I'm from Chicago originally. Mm -hmm. So Jordan, Jordan's are my go-to at all times. Nice, nice. You know, you know. And, and they got some new ones dropping on the 12th as well, too. You know, you know, we're not going to talk too much about those black and whites, man. But I got my eyes on the, I got the oh, Nike yeah. app download. And I'm like, you know, this is looking pretty good. Yeah, I don't do lines and stuff no more. So I got a little hookup. They're, they're holding for me at least for oh, a day or two. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, let's, let's talk after this. Man. Maybe you get a second pair of me, you know. I'm just saying, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah those, those lines, man. Listen, man. Quick story on that, man. In high school, going into college, like that was the thing, man. I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna just say, you know, it, it's something I would go do now. But yeah. you know, back in the days, a few friends, you know, you get up there, you stand on the line for a few hours, and you know, you just wait it out and get it. But now, yeah, I can't, I can't, no, I can't get on the line. No. And the lines be too long these days. I was like, this, this, back in the day, they weren't that long, but now they'll be wrapped around the mall. Like, <laughs> exactly. Nah, <laughs> for, forget about that. So yeah. what about this now? In terms of cars, are you a car person? Yes. So what's yes. what's your dream car? Uh, the Lamborghini truck. The Lamborghini truck. Have you seen it? it it's amazing. Oh, yes. man. No, no. I, I, I have not. Google I have, it as soon as we get off of this interview. I will. I will. I will, def <laughs> I will definitely check it out. See, for me, I'm all about, like, I really like the old-fashioned cars. So okay. like a 1950s, 1960s, Ooh. you know, the, the Chevys, the Impala, those, I don't know, for some reason, there's a few where I live. And for some okay. reason, you know, these guys, like they would have like a car show and it just looks like when they, you know, retouch it and do everything, it just, it just looks amazing. But that uh, Lamborghini truck, I haven't, I haven't seen that. I need to go check that out. Yeah, I've been talking about it since it came out. You know, it's, it's not in my price range yet. <laughs> <laughs> who, who knows? Maybe <laughs> once this interview goes out there, you know, so, someone might just bless you with that. You know, who knows, man? Let's see. 
<laughs> oh, bless him, Lord. Bless him. <laughs> Lord, bless me indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask this before we get into the interview then. Yeah. Now, in terms of Christmas, you know, so we're in the we're in that season, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas. What does Christmas mean to you personally? And what's kind of like a favorite Christmas memory or something that kind of resonated with you either growing up or, you know, in your adulthood or something? You know what? Christmas is about, you know, Jesus. It's why Jesus was born. He was born to bring peace, love, joy to the world. And that's what we should always understand. And I remember growing up, you know, I used to always, you know, want the biggest gift or <laughs> make sure my name was under the tree. And my grandmother set me down because I was the oldest of all her grandchildren. So when the other kids started coming up, I was getting less and less gifts. I was like, wait a minute, Granny, they got more than me. She said, listen, it's not about the gifts. You know, we have to always remember it's about Jesus Christ who was born so that we may have, you know, this joy, this peace that he brought to the world. And, you know, I had to remember that as the other kids are growing up and as, as, as I had to pass down some of those, you know, traditions from the family as well is that no matter, you know, we give gifts to each other, we celebrate each other uh, around the Christmas time, but we can never forget the reason for the season. I love that because, you know, mm -hmm. it makes you remember that children, I have small children. So those, those messages do linger. They do stay with them into adulthood. Yeah. Very, very important indeed, to stay. Indeed. So just thinking about now, since we're already way back, thinking about childhood and growing up. So you started out as a choir director in your hometown of Chicago, as you mentioned. Yeah. Could you have imagined the success of your solo career at that time? Never, never in a million years. Uh, because I was behind the scenes. You know, I was a choir director. Mm -hmm. I was a songwriter, writing for others, and I was producing for others. Yeah. And I watched their careers go. So sometimes I thought my assignment was just to be the one who pushed other careers. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so it was really... God who used me to carry a sound that was bigger than me and just opened my eyes up to the world and my name to the world beyond that. But back then I never would have thought this, uh, but I'm grateful that he did because he chose me to carry a sound that was bigger than I am. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. So you were the guy that was putting people on. Well, I'm not necessarily putting them on, but <laughs> I was behind the scenes though. A lot behind of songs, the scenes, yeah. writing and producing writing. for them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So in with over 20 years of time in ministry of years in ministry I'm sure there had to be some defining moments where you're like this is a God moment and because I had this experience my ministry was catapulted catapulted to the next level what yeah. were some of those defining moments for you you know what it's funny because uh, around 2009 10 when nobody greater came out right and I was like I didn't know what was going on with it but everyone else knew or everyone around me so to watch, that's when YouTube was getting real big with gospel mm -hmm. and things that sort. And to watch Donnie McClurkin and, and Marvin Sapp mm -hmm. and Marvin Winans and Karen Clark Sheard all singing this song that I recorded, I was like, it's some something, something going on with this song. Mm -hmm. But then I, I started to see other languages, other cultures, other nationalities, other countries. And that mm -hmm. was like, that's when I realized that, you know what? This is really bigger than I am. And I have to get ready for it because God is opening not only the door, but he's opening the nation. To me and my ministry so um that, that was the defining moment was just watching what god did with the song but also the song took me to the world right right have you ever felt the pressure to write or record a song that reaches that magnitude you know what i i did not but i did and so so when i was getting ready for my next project after nobody greater uh people were like how are you gonna top that or what you gonna do next and i was like i don't know and um i started writing turning around for me from there because mm -hmm. I realized that God don't duplicate. Right. So you got to listen for yes. what he's going to do next. Uh -huh. So I started listening for the next sound and the next, what he gave me next. So, you know, it's not about, you know, charts and all that for me. Um, it's really about hearing what God says and writing that sound and putting it out and trusting him to do what he said he's going to do with it. And just like he did it for nobody greater, he did it for turning around for me, he did it for joy. He just mm -hmm. continues to just put his stamp of approval on listening for what's next, not trying to duplicate for what was. But that's important, right? That's important too, because if you're trying to, you know, have him duplicate that, then you get stuck in that. And then it becomes all about self. Like, how can I do this? How can that? Then you're basically going to just get in your own head, right? So it's good yeah. that you're actually listening and, you know, and it, it's showing from the ministry of, on a whole. So, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 was rem I remember when uh, we did Nobody Greater and then God did what he did. And then to sit in meetings and to hear labels think they can redo what God did. 
I started to kind of sit down and be like, wait a minute. You know, I understand that the label is supposed to do this, but uh-huh. I have to hear the voice to God and realize that, you know, you do what you can do, but God does what he does in a season and in a time. So I try not to ever duplicate what he's done. You know, if I'm going to re-record a song, I re-record a song. I don't try to rewrite it. You know, mm-hmm. it, it is what mm-hmm. it is. So, Right. Nice. And that brings us to this Christmas EP. So yes. what... What made you decide it was time for a Christmas album? Your first Christmas EP, like Ooh. just to talk to us. <laughs> well, let me let me be honest. Um, I I decided to do it last year, okay. Um, and then we got hit with COVID nineteen, mm. and I said I'm gonna wait and do it next year when people are out for Christmas. And uh, I, so I was praying about it, and God got me. He said, "Do what I said, do, and let me do the rest." Wow. You know, I started I started being scared of what will happen, who's at church and who's listening. And um, uh, I want to create music uh, that will remind us about the reason for the season. And mm-hmm. it's kind of ironic that as I was writing the songs and recording them during a pandemic, I realized that the music brought peace to me. So I believe that this music is going to bring peace to the world from 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 people who go to church to people who don't. Just just those who just listen to music that need peace right now. We all know that with, with what we've been through the last year from from riots to killings to right. just everything, you know, a crazy election and and all. And we're still kind of going through a little bit. We all need a little peace right now to know that Jesus, yes. came, we may have life and that more abundantly. And he still is the reason for the season and every season, to be honest. So that's why, you know, I had to complete this assignment. And I believe that it's going to be blessing not today, tomorrow. It's not just for a month. It's mm-hmm. really music for life. It's like those exactly. Jesus songs you can live by for a while. Mm-hmm. I love that, the idea of peace, because that was going to be our next question. You know, what's the emotion that you plan to, that you wanted the album to evoke for your listeners? And yeah. just peace. Which, you want that it's you peace. it's yeah. fun emotions. It's, you know, when you listen to the whole EP, it's, it's fun songs. Mm-hmm. Like you're putting up a tree and putting up gifts, and then it's peaceful songs of worship. And then it's like a little song for the married couples a little bit, uh, uh, featuring Shantae Moore. Uh, mm-hmm. but, well, just, well, just with family, I'm going to just say that. But just understanding that, you know, it's something for everyone on this project that will bring them some type of solitude in this season. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned, go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, even, you know, when you mentioned uh, fun, like, you know, like uh, CD of David, like if, in listening to that, like, you know, it has that nice little vibe. I'm going to let everyone know Jesus is like, you know, it yeah. just it, it kind of just gets you. So you're going around the house, doing what you're doing, you know, bumping, getting through that season. Like, you know, it, it definitely picks you up for sure. And my joint is lift, lift it up. Yeah. I'm rocking with that one. Yeah. That oh, one man. had me. It had that signature, your signature, like praise and worship style. Yes. But still, yes. it's about the season of Jesus's birth. So it was beautiful. And, and it's those, and it's some of those songs like lift it up. My goal is that it's not just we remember it for Christmas, but mm-hmm. remember it for life. So that's a song you can listen to any day and just kind of get picked that. up. Yep. You know, Correct. get picked up. Correct. And that's what I want. You know, although we talk about Hosanna to the highest, it's really every day we should think about, you know, we should be, you know, lift him up because he is our strength and our power yes. every day. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So talk to us about the collaborations on this EP. Miranda Curtis, Sean Ooh, King. My yeah. help. Yeah. Man, such so, a beautiful blend. Yes. Talk to us about that. So, so, so why these yeah. ladies and what do they bring to the art? So two things. I have to talk with Miranda first. Miranda is like one of my favorite worship leaders ever since day one, when I put my eyes on her and I heard her, I saw what happens when she walked in the room. I was like, oh my God. And people know, like I produced Tasha Cobb before and I produced mm-hmm. other worship leaders before. When I saw Miranda, I said, she got that thing. You know, we don't even mm-hmm. know how to explain it, but she got that thing on her. Yeah, so yeah. we just been come close ever since then. And uh, when I wrote this song, I really wanted her to sing it. And the crazy part about it is that Miranda just did her part uh, a few weeks ago before we, oh, wow. we were finished and we almost didn't our schedules weren't mixing you know yeah. we couldn't come to the studio together people were closing down and for some reason within the last few weeks god opened the door she had time to do it i was in a whole nother state <laughs> and um she, she recorded <laughs> recorded the song sent the vocal we both kind of did stuff together and it was an amazing blend i believe the song is definitely enlightened because of her sound and her heart that made the song definitely, uh, you know, a, a staple. It's yeah. not just mm-hmm. gonna be today. People are gonna listen to this for a while, I, understanding yes. where the help comes from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, Shantae Moore is different. No, I am, <laughs> I, I am a '90s baby. 
I uh-huh. love, love, love 90s R&B. And, and, and I still love God, so people don't tweet me, don't text me. Uh, I love God the same. <laughs> I still love but, God too, <laughs> and you know. <laughs> but uh, I, I am a fan of Shantae's, and um, it, it was about maybe seven, eight years ago, we did Celebration of the Gospel together. We both did Chasing After You, mm-hmm. and I met her then, and her spirit was just such a sweet spirit. Crazy thing is that about a month or two ago, she was online, Sunday Night Live, she'd been going online, and she mm-hmm. did Nobody Greater. Mm-hmm. Ah, so then, okay. then, so I, I text her or whatever. I was like, oh my God, you really are, are worshiping God good. So we kind of, you know, stayed in touch. And mm-hmm. um, when I was getting this song, I didn't write this one, my friend did. I said, you know, this sounds like Shante Moore. He said, yeah, it does, it does, it does. I said, I'm going to call her and see what she said. <laughs> you know, I didn't know. Literally, she said, yes, but Sean, I'll do it. Let me hear the song. We didn't go through managers and all that till later. It was just a vibe between us two. Nice. And um, just it's just her voice on this particular song made the song. Uh, I mean, it, it definitely, now this song will be repeated every single year around the Christmas time. Mm-hmm. And not just in gospel. This is like an R&B, feel good soul. Like it's just, yes. just you yes. know, it just, just a, I'd rather be home, you know what I'm saying, than anywhere else in the world. And, and the crazy part about it is that it's called Home for Christmas because the last nine years, if I'm counting correctly, I have not been home for Christmas. Oh, wow. I spent Christmas in Africa and UK. I'm always kind of booked around the Christmas yeah, time. Yeah. So this year, because of COVID, because of the pandemic, I realized the importance of being home yes. for Christmas, you know, mm-hmm. and, and being around family as well. Right, right. I'm sure your family appreciates it. They're yeah. glad to have you. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Home for Christmas. Yeah. So I, I want to circle back just to one thing, because you kind of mentioned it just now. You talked about Miranda sending in her... Uh, her part of the song just recently. And I thought about the fact that you said earlier, the this this whole idea of the Christmas album was from a while back, right? Yeah. But And at the last minute, you kind of said, you know what, I'm still going to put it out during this COVID season. So what yeah. was the timeline? Because it sounds like it was a really short turnaround to get it out. Well, it wasn't short. It was uh, about maybe about six months. The, the thing okay. is that in those six months, we've been in the pandemic. So it's it's, it's like oh, yeah. uh, the musicians recording at their at their studios, uh, singers recording somewhere else. I'm recording at home, and we're pulling it together. The mix engineers in a whole other state. So we really didn't do much together in this season. Mm-hmm. It was a little different, and going back and forth on what I like, what I don't like. How do you mix this? It's been a learning, you know, a learning process for us. And then we just came together about a month ago to do a video because you know you can't put out audio without video these days. Mm-hmm. So oh, yeah. it, it it was a different situation. I learned a lot. Uh, recording in this temperature of the world mm-hmm. but uh, some of it is good as well you know like you know I see you at your studio I've actually built my home studio now so nice, you know, nice, it's nice. like some things that we took for granted because we could just go to the studio we had to kind of uh-huh. start you know uh, making things happen a different way so it's a different process I'm grateful for it because of the learning curve as well uh, but uh, I believe that it's definitely you know even after the pandemic after the vaccine and all that some things that we've learned to do will remain and it's right. good that we yes. learn to do it uh, right now. Right, right. I was going to ask that how much of what you learned during COVID recording will you keep into post-COVID? You know, a lot of it, a lot of it. Maybe not a full, you know, to do a full project, sometimes you want to feel the energy of being together. Because and everyone creating, being in the same room. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, creating energy and feeling energy is two different things. So I think we created it very well for it to come across. But feeling it, you'll feel it on the videos because it was actually in the same room. That's when they lifted some of the restrictions as well. So you have like 12 mm-hmm. people so in the room. Uh, but I definitely recording process that we we figured out. It was, you know, we saved a little bit on the audio part because mm-hmm. now you have to almost use the same budget to do audio and video. Mm-hmm. So I've taken notes true. on, on yeah. how you save it in order to make sure the video is top quality as well because mm-hmm. music today is seen first before it's heard, kind of. We are so excited for the video. Oh my goodness. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. We can't we can't wait to see that as well too. And then yeah. even bef- but even before, I guess one one thing because you were mentioning that, you know, during that 20 years and you know, not not trying to duplicate what God is doing and so forth. But what word, I guess, then would you give to, you know, that worship leader that you know that's been, you know, worshiping at their church for a while thinking about maybe making that transition you know maybe recording a first single or ep or even that person that has been on the journey for quite a while don't you know they might feel a little bit you know this hearted as you know hey you know i haven't really reached you know where i thought i would have reached during that period like what what word would you give to that person you know what i'll tell them what my mentor told me 
uh, and he told me a long time ago, understand who you are in God and your assignment on the earth. And as you walk out your assignment on the earth, you define success and it don't define you. So whatever you, whatever you decide to do, whatever you desire to do, do it. You know, especially today, it's so easy to do it. And don't be defined by what you think is successful. Be defined by your doing and allow God to do the rest. Wow. You define success. Success yeah. doesn't define you. That's a word. I like it. I like it. I like okay. it. Take that up and coming worship leaders and songstresses and singers. Don't yeah. let success define you. That's right. Yeah. Well, we are honored to have you, Vashon. Thank you so much for taking the time to chop it up with us. Oh, of course. Oh, yes. Folks, Home for Christmas is Vashon's first Christmas EP, and it's yeah. available for pre-order. Hey, November right? 27th. Let that day oh. sink in. November 27th. So, you know, when you're out there running for that Black Friday and all that yeah. jazz, make sure you just stop, hit your phone. And when they, and once, they're done, once they do the pre-order, what, which track are they getting? So when you pre-order, you get lifted up and you get home with you with Shantae Moore. So I just, you know, I just want to give a little bit for you. Yeah, listen. Versatility. Yeah. Listen. If you always hear what we were hearing, you know, that's all I'm going to say. You you want to pre-order. Don't wait until December 11th. Nah, no, don't do that. Pre-order. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking some time with us. You know, I want to make sure, you know, you stay. You, you get back to, you know, all the stuffings and everything else. You got to go prep, you know, work. I, work. I, I pick my energy up so I can, so I can, so I can finish cooking exactly, a bit. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you so much for chopping Thank it up you. with us, man. Enjoy. Have a happy Thanksgiving to you, the yes, family, sir. and everything else, man. And, you know, all, all the best with the album because, I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're already fans and it's not even dropped as oh, yet. So right. we're, we're enjoying it. Thank That's you. That's love. Appreciate it. Blessings. God bless you. Take care.